Uh, good morning. Sunday morning. Actually, Easter Sunday. I'm over here trying to get a few hours done before I go to dinner over at my friend's house and uh, over Giselle's, over Ponticello's. So anyway, I've been working on steps. Now these are normally would have been castings on a real locomotive, full size locomotive. I don't like to say real, but anyway, uh, I'm going to explain how I did this. But primary subject of this video right here is to show the tapping head. Now this is what's called a Procurner. It's a, it's a brand name. Uh, this one will do up to quarter inch. And then I have another one over here. Believe it or not, when I worked at DeLaval, De Laval, they threw it in the garbage. I had two of them. I gave one away. And this is another one I had. Um, uh, they threw these away. So, obviously, I took them out of the junk. Never did a thing to them. Been using it for years. I, one of these days, I've got to make some wrenches for it. But this will do from quarter all the way up to... I've done three-quarter, uh, 13 with it. Three, no, three-quarter, three-quarter... Ten. No, not that big. Uh, well, anyway, over half inch you can do. What, five eighths, boron depends, material, aluminum. Anyway, uh, the way this works, oh, this, by the way, this is a paramatic 20 inch drill press. What that means is that I can put a 20 inch piece in here. So it's 10, whatever, how many distance it is here. I don't know. They call it a 20. Anyhow. Uh, it's variable speed. All my drill presses are variable speed. Uh, the drill press is out here anyway. And uh, it's three phase power. So I got the three phase motor running in the back of a slave motor. And then variable up here. I don't know if you can see that thing up here. But anyway, we can turn it on. There's a mechanism in here, there's cones inside there. When you press down on it, it starts to rotate the proper way, taps the hole, and then when you pull back on it, the second cone drops in like a planetary gear of some kind, and then it reverses it. And now I have a 256 thread in here. It's pretty small for this. It's about the smallest you could do. I would not attempt to do 172 or 080 and forget 0090. Ain't no way. But I have used it for 256, so. Uh, here we go. I got to drill four holes. By the way, what I'm doing is I drill eight holes on the bottom, four holes on the top. The eight holes on the bottom here are to mount um, wood. On the prototype, there was wood planks here, and they had two. I don't know why they had two. I guess in case one broke, this, I don't know. Some brainstorm per person figured, well, I'll make one and then one and one. But um, uh, they were out on the on the in the heyday of the K4. And the Pepsi, they were rough sawn oak. And now on the locomotives out there at this museum, they have pressure treated lumber, I guess. So they're just one by, which looks kind of funny, but I know, I know what it's supposed to be on there. Anyway, that, that's what they're using. And uh, I'm, by the way, I spent two days making these, so what are these worth? I got uh, 20 hours into them. 40 bucks an hour, $800? Sure. Anyhow. Use a little lubricant, and you just cut down, and you just put it up, line it up, and just keep the pressure, steady pressure down, follow it down, and just back it right out. Every two holes, put a little lubricant on. Just to 
Johnny Lucas get on this thing during this half one. It's clearing them up a little bit. I can see it coming. Very low. I see chip. Okay, that one's done. get a little bit of a close-up so you can see what's going on. There's a little bit of a wobble in the spindle. Probably in the bushing that's on there. That doesn't matter. Just don't hold the drill, the uh, vice too tight. Let it wobble a little bit. You just stop it from rotating. Let it kind of float. Say, it doesn't like a tapping head. When I did the smoke box front on the K4, I had I don't know how many holes to tap around here. And uh, all 440, I tap them, and then I put the bolts in from the back and put the nuts on the front, look like studs. Get the other side real quick. Okay, so that's the tapping uh, set up. Now the only thing left to do is deburr it on the inside a little file. Dust it, uh, set it through the dust blaster, bead blaster for one last shot. And uh, be ready to paint. i got to pre-paint these. And then uh, I've got to fit the wood up to it. And that's a whole other story. I'm going to work on that today, make a little fixture to, to drill the wood. I'm going to probably use poplar, only because it's a finer grade in wood and I have a lot of it. And, uh, wood is wood, you're not going to notice it, that the grain would be too uh, rough on oak to, to simulate oak's too big. I could probably use mahogany, that would, I could probably get away with that, but uh, nobody cares about what kind of grain wood it is. They're, they're going to notice the overall picture of the locomotive, they're not going to see that particular wood is popular versus oak. Anyway, I got, tomorrow I'm going to start the uh, back steps, which are a whole different thing, is a left and a right. Here was, they were equal. So uh, I thought about making a casting on this. Oh, by the way, I wanted to show you this real quick. In order to get that hole in there, this groove, this thing, I put the two together like this, and then put them in the middle like this, clamped it, picked up the center where I wanted the hole to be, and I roughed it out with an end mill, just roughed it out. I had a basic layout there. And then I took the boring head, and just bored right through it. Just kept boring, boring, boring until I got to where I want it. And funny part about it is the holes are not completely round. It's round, but it's oval, more like oval. And so I just just kept walking the the uh, after I bored the hole, I walked the moved the uh, head over a little bit, took another cut, moved the head over again, took another cut. So it was a little bit oval on both sides. Then went the other way on the other one, and then uh, that made them oval. As you can see, if they're not completely round, you might not, maybe you won't be able to pick that up. I don't know. But, um, and then just, of course, blast them and sand them and whatever else you got to do. And by the way, they're all silver soldered together. These are four individual, five in the piece, you can count the back, four individual pieces. And um, I used a block of wood to make these pieces. I'll show you that in a second. These are what I used to um, form the sides. As you can see, I take the one side, you can see it matches right to it. And uh, this is wood, it's purple heart. It's very hard wood. And my neighbor two doors down, Mohammed, uh, he's from um, 
somewhere in Africa, Liberia, the Ivory Coast. And, but anyway, he does African art, and he's my friend, and uh, he does, he makes the bases and a lot of the wood, he uses this kind of real hard exotic woods that he polishes them, whatever. So I got a lot of scrap from him, and uh, I just put, kneeled the, the brass, put it in the uh, Kurt Weiss and just smashed it, and then adjusted them up a little bit, and then uh, of course trimmed them, whatever. But that's how I did it, is use the wood blocks, boom. Made my own die. Somebody else would make it out of aluminum, this, that, hard to steal, boom, 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 boom. Use your head, guys. Wood. Works for me. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it on the steps. Uh, I'll show how I make the uh, wood blocks, the wood, the wood treads, and uh, I'm a little fixture for that. And by the way, I did all of these on the readout, so they're all equal. So now I'm going to make the little fixture out of aluminum and then set, inset the wood in there and drill it. And then I'm going to use 256 button head screws that look like carriage bolts. They'll, they'll simulate carriage bolts. And uh, I'll keep the fixture, everything, keep everything, because in case these crack or something happens to them over the years, I'll be able to make replacements. So uh, that's it for now on this, and uh, happy Easter.